Okay, this is section 10.5, and what we're going to talk about is rationalizing denominator, denominators. There's this huge rule in math that says that you cannot leave a radical in the denominator. So I'm going to go over a couple things that are going to make our process easier when we get to some more difficult problems. I want to review something. If we had the square root of 5 minus 1 times the quantity, the square root of 5 plus 1. Okay, I, if you can do these with a little bit of um, speed, then it would help. You know that the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5. You know, because this is a plus and this is a minus, the middle two terms are going to equal 0. And then negative 1 times 1 is a minus 1. So your answer here is 4. So you notice that these are the same numbers, these are the same numbers, this is a minus, this is a plus. When we multiply them together, there are no radicals left. Likewise, if you have the square root of 3 plus the square root of 2 times the quantity, the square root of 3 minus the square root of 2. Again, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is 3. The middle two terms are going to equal 0 when you FOIL it out. And then the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. That's a minus, so 3 minus 2 is 1. So make sure you understand the process of doing those problems. It'll make everything easier when we get to them. Okay, so I'm going to start off with some problems where we have just a single radical in the denominator. And we're going to rationalize it. Rationalize it means that we're going to make sure that the denominators are a rational number or that there's not a radical in the denominator. So our first problem is going to be 7 over the square root of 2. So we've talked before about how squares undo square roots and square roots undo squares. So if we want to get rid of this radical, we need to multiply the denominator by the square root of 2. We can't change the value of what something is, but we can change what it looks like. So if I multiply the square root of 2 in the denominator, I have to multiply the square root of 2 in the numerator as well. So I multiply across, this is going to be 7 times the square root of 2. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2, if you look at it as the square root of 4, the square root of 4 is 2. Or you can just realize that a square, when we square this, multiply by itself, it undoes this, and, and does the square root. So it's a 2. Okay, so let's look at another problem. We have 2 times the square root of 9 all over the square root of 16y. So it's probably going to be easier if we simplify first. So the square root of 9 is 3, so this is 2 times 3. The square root of 16 is 4, and we're left with the square root of y in the denominator. So we can't leave a radical in the denominator, so we're going to multiply the denominator by the square root of y. We're going to multiply the numerator by the square root of y. Remember, this is equal to 1. So we're just multiplying by 1. We're changing what it looks like. We're not changing the value. 2 times 3 is 6. So this is 6 times the square root of y over um, 4. And the square root of y times the square root of y is y. However, and I probably should have done this before I multiplied, we have to reduce our fractions. 2 goes in here twice. 2 goes in here three times. So our answer is 3 times the square root of y all over 2y. Okay, moving right along. We're going to just up our level of complexity with every single problem that we work. Okay, the cubed root of 2 over 25. Okay, this is one of those problems where it's probably easier if you will go through and break this apart as the cube root of 2 over the cube root of 25. But I'm going to write 25 as 5 times 5. Okay, so that way you can see my thought process as you can see what I'm thinking, what I'm doing. In order to take the 5s out of the, out of the radical, because this is a cube root, we need three of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another 5 in this radical. I already have a cube root on top. I'm just going to put a 5 up here as well. So this is the cube root of 2 times 5 is 
2 times 5 is 10 over, since this is a 3 and we have a 5 multiplied by itself 3 times, we can take it out of the radical and that's just a 5. So our answer is the cube root of 10 over 5. Okay, another problem, we're going to have the square root of 5m over 11m. Again, this is another problem where it's probably going to seem easier if we break this apart as the square root of 5m over the square root of 11n. Okay, so because this is a square root, our index here's a 2. We need two 11s, we need two n's. So I need another 11 and I need another n. So if I do that in the denominator, I have to do it in the numerator. I need another 11 and I need an n. So whatever we do to the numerator, we have to do the denominator vice versa. So if we multiply across, 5 times 11 is 55 m n, and all of that is over. We can take the 11s out, and we can take the n's out. So that's over 11 n. Okay, the fifth root of a squared, don't forget when you're working problems, don't forget to keep up with the indices. That's really important. The fifth root of a squared all over the fifth root of 32 b to the 12th power. Okay, so let's break this apart. Let's talk about this. Let's make this the fifth root of a squared. There's really nothing we can do to that over 32 is 2 multiplied by itself five times. I'm just going to leave this inside the radical for now. So this is 32. The number closest to 12 that 5 will go into is 10. So this is going to be b to the 10th power and then b to the second power because it still has to equal b to the 12th. You know your laws of exponents, when you multiply the same base, you're going to add the exponents. So let's take everything out that we can take out. We have the fifth root of a squared over the fifth root of 32 is 2. The fifth root of b to the 10th, remember it's going to be 10 over 5, which is 2, so that's b squared. And we're left with the fifth root of b cubed in the denominator. Okay, our rule is we can't have a radical in the denominator, so I need a number that's divisible by 5, which would be 5. So let's do a b squared here. If we add a b squared here or multiply by a b squared here, I need to multiply by a b squared there as well. So this is going to be the fifth root. I'm kind of running out of room here. This is a squared, b squared over 2. Okay, this is going to be a b because 3 and 2 is 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. So we're going to have this b squared times another b, which is going to be b to the third power. Okay, that was that is just about as hard as those kind of problems get. Okay, I'm going to erase this, and then we're going to do some that have a binomial in the denominator. They have a binomial in the denominator. We're going to talk about how to get rid of the radical when you have a binomial in the denominator. If we had three over the square root of 5 plus 1. Okay, I think we kind of started off the lecture with this. We want to get rid of this radical. So we know we can multiply what is called a conjugate, which is going to be the same numbers, but instead of a plus, it's going to be a minus. You just change the sign. If I do that in the numerator, I have to do it, or if I do it in the denominator, I have to do it in the numerator. So this is the square root of 5 minus 1. So in the numerator, I'm going to leave this and multiplied. Like just leave it as factor. So this is 3 times the square root of 5 minus 1 over the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5. And you multiply when you foil it out and then 1 minus 1 is minus 1 so 5 minus 1 is 4 and that's your answer. So those are really, even though they look more complex, they're really kind of easier than what we just did. Okay, if we had, um, let's look at 3 over 2 minus the square root of x. OK, 
Okay, this is another problem where we, we need to multiply by a conjugate. <coughs> Excuse me. So, we're gonna multiply by two plus the square root of x. If I do it in the denominator, I have to do it in the numerator. So that's two plus the square root of x. Okay, so I'm just gonna multiply across. Well, actually I'm not. I'm gonna leave it as factors. So that's three times two plus the square root of x. In the denominator, when you FOIL it out, two times two is four. Remember that your outer two, your inner two are gonna equal zero. And then minus the square root of x times the square root of x is just x. So that is that problem. Okay, I wanna work one more where we have both numbers in the binomial are radicals. We're gonna do the exact same thing. I just want you to realize, even though it looks kind of yucky, it's not. So if we had the square root of five plus three, all over the square root of three minus the square root of two. So this time I have two radicals in the denominator. So when I wanna rationalize, I wanna get rid of them, I'm gonna multiply by the conjugate. The conjugate are gonna be the exact same numbers, but it's gonna be the opposite sign. If this is a minus, this is gonna be a plus. I have to multiply by one, so that's something over itself is one. I'm gonna multiply by the square root of three plus the square root of two, okay? So, you can leave the top as factors, that is fine for me. Um, if you're taking your test on the computer, they may foil it out. We'll do that in just a second if we need to. All over, let's talk about the denominator. The square root of three times the square root of three is three. The outer two, the inner two are gonna equal zero minus the square root of two times the square root of two is two. So three minus two is one. So you don't really, even, since that's one, you really don't even have a denominator anymore. If you wanna multiply this out, if you wanna foil this out, the first one's five times three is 15, so that's the square root of 15. The outer two would be the square root of 10. That's a positive, the square root of 10. Um, then the inner two, that would be three times the square root of three. And then the last two, would be the square, would be three times the square root of two. And I'm looking at that, that doesn't simplify, that doesn't simplify, nothing adds together, that's it. That's your answer. Okay, Doug, um, work on some problems. You know you have problems in math lab to work on. Make sure you work on those and um, I will get a video for 10.6 done as quickly as possible. Thanks you guys.